Good evening, all. This is MemphisWeather.net meteorologist Eric Proceus, and it is uh, a little after 7 o'clock on Tuesday evening, March 16th. Discussion for this evening will be on our potential for severe weather during the day tomorrow on St. Patrick's Day. We are going to be uh, looking at a multi-round weather system that could affect the Mid-South, is expected to uh, affect the Mid-South tomorrow. Uh, the first one of those rounds will be a warm front that's moving north, and that will bring some scattered thunderstorms from North Mississippi into West Tennessee. Uh, could be by the time we start to wake up in the morning, or maybe it will wake you up. Uh, we could start to hear that thunder by about 5 or 6 in the morning, uh, and we'll expect to see uh, scattered activity possible across the area uh, for a good part of the morning, perhaps. Uh, first little wave will lift to the north, but it looks like there might be uh, another little round coming in from northeast Arkansas that could affect portions of the area as well. So we're calling for scattered thunderstorms during the morning tomorrow. Uh, during the afternoon hours is uh, where maybe the biggest question mark is as far as the uh, activity in the area. Could see a few isolated storms during the afternoon, but right now it appears that uh, a good part of the afternoon may be dry in the metro. Uh, any of those isolated storms that form are more likely down in Mississippi well to our south. However, that will allow us to become more unstable during the afternoon as uh, we get strong southerly winds uh, and temperatures rising into the 70s with uh, dew points getting into the 60s. Setting the stage for uh, what is probably a more concerning portion of the event tomorrow, and that is during the evening hours, we expect a wave of thunderstorms to move through from Arkansas, moving to the east uh, ahead of a cold front. Um, that is when we have our highest probability of severe weather tomorrow. Uh, right now we're looking at around 5 to 10 p.m. Those could be adjusted an hour or two one way or the other, but uh, most likely about from rush hour in the afternoon and through the evening hours, and we'll be watching that one very closely. As far as the primary threats are concerned, those morning storms uh, will be what we call elevated storms. And so uh, when they are not uh, rooted to the surface of, uh, of the atmosphere, um, they are most likely to produce hail. Could get a little bit of large hail out of that possibly in some of those. Could get a few brief wind gusts and heavy rain would certainly be a threat as well. We'll want to keep that uh, hail threat in mind early in the day. Uh, and then as we go into the evening hours, uh, the atmosphere will definitely become more unstable. We'll have uh, a good amount of wind energy at a pretty vigorous upper level system that's moving in as well. Those evening storms could produce damaging winds. Uh, in fact, they could be quite strong. We could see some large hail with those storms as well. And we have a concern for possible tornadoes uh, with that wave of storms that moves through. Rainfall will also be heavy, and so flash flooding will also be a concern. I'm going to take a look through and let this uh, loop through a couple of times. This is our uh, NAM three kilometer model, which is uh, one of our high resolution models. And this is uh, looping through from 5 a.m. tomorrow morning until midnight tomorrow night. And you will see the multiple waves of uh, uh, precipitation that move through the area. Uh, the first one of those early in this loop is moving up from North Mississippi. That is the warm front moving north. Those storms have the potential to produce some hail, uh, a lull during the afternoon hours perhaps, and then we get that round that moves through in the evening. Now that evening round does not necessarily look like it could be just one straight squall line, uh, one line of storms that moves through fairly quickly. Uh, it could actually be, as I described it, more of a wave where we have multiple storms that move through the same area. Areas, um, kind of broken apart in uh, in clusters and not really a significant way, uh, line. Uh, that would be a concerning part of that uh, evening round. If we were to have a straight squall line, uh, we would expect more of a damaging wind type of threat um, and perhaps some embedded uh, isolated tornadoes. Uh, if that line does not coalesce and we get more uh, scattered or broken lines or clusters of cells, uh, those storms are expected that they could be supercells. That means that they could bring not only the damaging wind risk and some hail, but could also produce some tornadoes in the area. We're going to want to be keeping a very, very close eye on that tomorrow. Uh, overall, uh, we're looking at what is a uh, been defined right now as a moderate risk of severe weather for the Memphis Metro. Uh, extends roughly from Jonesboro and Jackson, Tennessee, south, and in fact, it encompasses most of Mississippi, a good large portion of Alabama as well. This is a pretty large area that is going to be affected by these storms. A moderate risk is a level four out of five on the uh, Storm Prediction Center risk level. Uh, high winds will be a threat, large hail will be a threat, and we're going to keep an eye out for the possibility of some tornadoes as well.
Uh, looking specifically at the probabilities for each one of those weather types, uh, you see the moderate risk there in the upper left encompasses a very large portion of the Mid-South into the uh, uh, lower Mississippi Valley and the Southeast. The upper right panel has our tornado risk for tomorrow. Uh, we are kind of on the northern edge of a 15% risk zone. That means there's a 15% chance that there could be a tornado within 25 miles of your location. Uh, in the lower left, the hail risk is at 30%. Uh, that is quite elevated. As well we're concerned about hail a couple of times tomorrow and then for the wind threat we're pretty much right in the middle of the 30% uh, risk zone for that as well all of those are the probability within 25 miles and all of those are uh, quite elevated um, also in each one of those you notice that there is a black hatched area around the uh, including the Memphis area on those and that indicates that we could see a, uh, a a larger risk of more significant weather. So uh, tornadoes that may not necessarily be just spin up tornadoes, but we could see one or two that could become strong. Uh, the hail could be large. The wind could be stronger than usual with, uh, with this storm system. So we're uh, definitely wanting to keep you alert to that possibility. So the moderate risk uh, is level four out of five. We could see widespread severe storms within that area. It doesn't mean that we are going to see widespread severe storms right here in the metro, but within that large moderate risk area, uh, we are uh, expecting that there will be some fairly significant weather. A few uh, tips to keep in mind and to uh, prepare you for this uh, storm system that's coming through tomorrow. We want you to make sure you know your geography. Uh, many of you that are listening to my voice are in Shelby County and uh, or are in DeSoto, Tipton counties right here in the metro. You need to know what counties are to your uh, south and to your west tomorrow. The morning storms will be coming in from the south. If warnings are issued for DeSoto County or Tunica County, those storms are likely moved toward, moving towards Shelby County. Uh, and as we head into the evening, Evening hours, those storms will be coming from the west, and so Crittenden County is upstream from us, uh, Lee, St. Francis, Cross Counties. I think there's a higher probability of warnings with those evening storms tomorrow, and so you want to know what area is to your west so you can be prepared as they head this direction. Know the difference between a watch and a warning. Watches are for conditions that are favorable for severe weather. They are typically issued for several hours at a time and cover a large area. Uh, we basically, uh, at that point, when a watch is issued, a tornado watch or a severe thunderstorm watch, you need to be monitoring for the potential for warnings and be prepared to execute your action plan uh, if that warning is issued. And the warning means that severe weather is occurring or imminent, uh, typically lasts less than an hour at a time and cover a much smaller area. These are the polygons that we refer to when uh, warnings are issued and uh, alerts are sent out. They aren't issued on a countywide basis. They are for the path of the storm and issued typically typically as polygons. If the warning is issued, it is time for you to take action. And to make it maybe in simpler terms for you, I'm going to credit uh, Brad Panovich uh, over in North Carolina with this lovely graphic here. The cupcake watch means we have all the ingredients that are uh, available to us as in a severe thunderstorm watch or tornado watch. The ingredients are coming together, but we have nothing cited. If we see the cupcake being made, the warning is issued. Uh, you need to take action. If it were a cupcake, I would take the first bite. If it's a tornado warning, you need to be taking the first steps towards your safe place. Remember that extreme weather does not stop for anything. You need to make sure you are prepared for tomorrow. Uh, now is the time to make sure your safe place is accessible, that it is ready for you tomorrow. You need to be communicating uh, with your family or other loved ones uh, what your plan is, where will you be tomorrow, particularly tomorrow evening. Um, it, I would uh, just strongly suggest that if you don't have to be out tomorrow night, uh, that you do not, that you're prepared just in case. Um, and you need to be communicating that plan with your family about where you will go, what you will do, depending on where you are and, uh, and how you'll keep yourself safe. Um, for tornado sheltering guidelines, we need to review this uh, because it is possible that tornado warnings will be issued. You need to seek the best available refuge area when a tornado warning is issued. Whatever you have available, uh, it is time to take action. And it's best to be in a place where you can find some of these good options in an interior room of a well-constructed home. Lowest floor, uh, put as many walls between you and the storm as possible. If you have a storm shelter, more power to you. Make sure that you've got that ready as well. You don't want to be out in your vehicles or in large open uh, gymnasiums outdoors where uh, sports are taking place or whatever. You need to be ready to seek shelter uh, if that happens.
Um, we've talked before about warning dissemination methods. There are many ways to get watches and warnings. Uh, all of them have their pros and cons. A mix of these is best. Do not rely solely on one way of receiving your warning information. That warning type could fail and that goes all the way from just your local television station in case there's a power outage uh, to outdoor sirens that you may not hear indoors they're not built to be heard indoors um, some people can hear them some people cannot if it's torrential rain and the wind is blowing it may be hard to hear them uh, mobile apps are an excellent source of information as well we highly recommend them in fact we produce one and we would love for you to download that but remember that you need to have a backup source uh, just in case as well so to summarize this, we are looking for some scattered morning storms tomorrow. They could produce some hail. Um, we don't believe that there is a widespread severe weather risk with those storms, um, but uh, need to be aware of those. The evening storms are mo more likely to be severe, and all modes of severe weather are on the table for tomorrow evening. You need to be preparing now for the possibility of hail, wind gusts, tornadoes, and heavy rain tomorrow. If you're able to garage your vehicles uh, overnight tonight, I recommend doing so. Uh, if that hail starts coming down, tomorrow before uh, you get out go to work or whatever um, then you will have it uh, in a good place uh, clean up any of the outdoor material that might be blowing around uh, with any storms that move through make sure everything's tied down uh, that you have your small children and small pets secured going into the day tomorrow uh, and just be prepared have that safe place ready in case you need it also we recommend that you avoid travel if possible tomorrow evening uh, outdoor events are likely not going to be going on anyway if we've got storms in the area um, but you need to be uh, not your vehicle does not need to be your first place of shelter tomorrow night you need to have multiple ways of getting you know, warning information. We highly recommend that you download a good mobile app. We would recommend ours. Uh, not afraid to plug that at all. You can find it at app.memphisweather.net. And once you get into that app, then we recommend that you uh, get the severe weather alerts. Uh, that is an optional uh, addition to the app, but that will be what you want for tomorrow night. And finally, we've gone over a lot of different safety information. Um, I've tried to make sure that, uh, that you're aware of the possibilities. Uh, it does not mean that, uh, you know, a place that you are going to be is going to be directly impacted, but you need to be prepared for that and you need to be prepared, but not scared. Just get things ready uh, and, and be ready just in case. Finally, one last uh, plug here for Stormwatch Plus alerts in our memphisweather.net app. Go to app.memphisweather.net and download that. And then optionally, you can go in, of course, and get the Stormwatch Plus alerts. You can set uh, lo multiple locations to get alerts for. Um, you can even choose the watches and warnings that you would like to receive uh, and just toggle those on within the app. Pull it in your locations and it will let you know if you fall into one of those polygons that uh, is more than likely going to be issued tomorrow night. Everyone stay safe. We'll be communicating with you through Throughout the event, we'll be on social media, Facebook and Twitter, providing you the latest updates uh, and any, uh, any information that you need to have. We'll make sure that you get that. Stay safe, and we'll uh, talk to you again later.